After years of single player gaming kind of being ignored, 2020 has been a great year for it. Hi folks, it's Falcon and today on Game Ranks, the top 25 new single player games of 2020. Quick disclaimer, Elden Ring, Vampire Masquerade, Bloodlines, and Dying Light 2 are not coming out this year. That's the reason they're not on this list. If it was a list that included 2021, we'd probably talk about all three. Starting off at number 25 is Yakuza Like a Dragon, a reimagining kind of reboot of Yakuza, which uses a turn-based JRPG battle system. I'm really interested in where this game goes. I don't know if it's going to be the permanent style they make these games in or if they end up making another series altogether. But I'm going to go ahead and say I think it looks cool. I think it sounds interesting and it could turn out pretty great. Yakuza Like a Dragon is coming sometime in the latter half of this year. At number 24 is Mafia Definitive Edition, positively one of the coolest games of all time, if not necessarily exactly what it set out to do. The Definitive Edition comes in to correct all of the visuals and attempt to give us the same game, but better. Mafia is just a really cool game. It's something very much a product of its era, but I really enjoy it. I will absolutely be playing Mafia Definitive Edition when it comes out on September 25th. At number 23 is The Medium, a next-gen psychological horror game which will be launching with the Xbox Series X, which splits gameplay between two dimensions, which I think is very cool. You control the same character using one stick, however you're dealing with obstacles in both worlds. It's really cool looking. I think it's a great idea, and I'll absolutely be checking it out when I get an Xbox Series X. And number 22 is Crash Bandicoot 4, It's About Time. This is a game that I've been hoping for for a very long time, especially after the remake of the original three Crash Bandicoots. That's a fantastic collection, and in my mind, that was saying, wow, we really, really need more. And that's exactly what this is. It's a reimagining. It's much larger looking. We've got a new art style. We've got new powers. And in basically every way, it's a game that I'm looking forward to playing. And it'll be landing on Xbox One and PlayStation 4 October 2nd. At number 21 is Neo 2, the sequel to the tremendously good Souls-like, which is itself a very good game that builds on pretty much every concept of the original, remedies a few problems, I think ends up being a little more balanced and a lot bigger. Neo 2 is a fantastic game. It came out back on... March 12th, and it will give you a ton to do. At number 20 is Crusader Kings 3, a historical grand strategy game. In fact, the sequel to one of the bigger strategy slash dynasty series the last long while. This is a pretty big update for the franchise. It's moving into a fully 3D rendering mode, which it's never done before. It's also got a larger and more detailed map. I will absolutely be playing Crusader Kings when it comes to PC on September 1st. At number 19 is Stone Shard, which is a turn-based RPG currently in early access. The game's set in an open world, but in my opinion, it's a game that very closely resembles a turn-based dungeon crawler in a lot of ways. There's a lot of different abilities and equipment you can add to your character, constant additions to new content on account it's still in early access. It's $14.99, it's worth every cent, give it a shot. Number 18 is Carry On, kind of a Metroidvania where you aren't playing as the hero, but rather the monster. You've escaped as a test subject of something in a lab and you exact your revenge on everybody. This game is so friggin' cool. I've been following it for quite a while now. It's not the biggest game you're ever going to play, but it is a type of gameplay that is incredibly satisfying. It is absolutely worth the $19.99. At number 17 is Desperados 3, a real-time tactics game, a prequel to Desperados Wanted Dead or Alive, a game which will be set up so that you can do a completely no-kill run, which is interesting considering it's a cowboy game called Desperados. There hasn't been one of these in a very long time. The last one was a spin-off game called Helderado that came out in 2007. So it's really cool to see them resurrect the series and you should give it a shot. Number 16 is Half-Life Alex, a VR shooter that although it has some limitations is actually one of the most fun of the VR shooter attempts that we've seen. It also gives us more Half-Life, which is not something we get a lot of. What's great is that it's not just a shooter. There's also a lot of the trademark sort of Valve physics-y type puzzles in it, and they work really good in VR. Give Half-Life Alex a shot. It's a great game. 
At number 15 is the Final Fantasy VII Remake. Final Fantasy VII is, of course, one of the most influential games out there. It's a huge RPG, and they remade it in a manner that was actually kind of controversial when it came out, but I think we all kind of agree at this point. This is a great remake and an interesting step that could actually yield a lot of interesting possibilities. It's also beautiful, it plays great, it's fun as hell. Of course, just play, play Final Fantasy VII Remake, it's great. At number 14 is the Resident Evil 3 remake, which uh, may be a little bit less controversial. However, definitely not the strongest out of Resident Evil 2 and 3, just by nature of the game. Resident Evil 2 is probably the better of the two anyways. Of course, the remakes are going to mirror that dynamic. Resident Evil 3 is still fantastic, and the remake is absolutely amazing. It is the best possible version of the game, in my opinion, and if you haven't played it, why? Why haven't you played it? Number 13 is Persona 5 Royal. Now, Persona 5 is, of course, one of the premier JRPGs out there. If you love JRPGs, you've at least heard about it. But if you haven't played it by now, this is the best version you can play it. It has a lot of extra content and really justifies, in my opinion, being a game again. Persona 5 is great. The extra content is great. I mean, again, if you like JRPGs and don't like this, I don't know. It must be the story or something. At number 12 is Assassin's Creed Valhalla, which I will say we have fairly limited information about. The trailer released earlier in the year, really cool though. I'm really excited for it, of course. They're most likely building upon the ideas in Odyssey and Origins, and I am there for it. Of course I'm there for it. Viking Assassin's Creed, why wouldn't you be there for it? That's exactly what you would think at this point. How do we keep this fresh? At Vikings, let's do Vikings. That's launching November 17th on PC, PS4, Xbox One, and Stadia. At number 11 is the Destroy All Humans remake. Destroy All Humans is, of course, a funny, but more importantly, silly and fun with its gameplay concepts kind of shooter. It's a goofy game, and to call it just a shooter, I think, is a bit reductive because it's a lot more than that. But it gives you a lot of different types of gameplay in a third-person sort of action game. And although I wouldn't call it open world, it certainly is kind of along the lines of a sandbox game. It looks amazing now. They kept all of the voices. The game is basically the same game, it just looks amazing now. And it's one of the games from an earlier time that holds up incredibly well. You should play it. At number 10 is Ori and the Will of the Wisps, the sequel to Ori and the Blind Forest, which takes the concepts from the first, makes them much bigger. Also, it thankfully moved to an autosave system. I'm gonna go ahead and say I like that a lot. It definitely was an improvement over Blind Forest. What can I say? These are both incredibly good games. Great platformers, great Metroidvanias. Deserves every bit of praise that it gets. And if you like platformers, just play it. It's one of the best. At number nine is The Last of Us Part Two, a huge, massive project that I think we all saw coming with the end of the original Last of Us. Unfortunately, we all saw a lot of this game coming because a lot of it got leaked prior to release. That doesn't change the fact that it is a very fun game that does paint itself as perhaps one of the most dour games that's ever existed. I know the game is basically telling you violence isn't fun, but they made it so fun. Last of Us Part 2 is out now on PS4. And number eight is Halo Infinite, the next in the very long running Halo series and a big launch title for the Xbox Series X. Basically, it's intended to be the tour de force that shows us what the new Xbox is capable of. And it looks like it's one that's probably shaping up to be pretty darn awesome. I am personally pretty excited. Halo has always been a great first person shooter series. I'm interested in what they're intending to add for the next generation of this. Halo has certainly seen a lot of competing shooters happen during its lifespan, and I'm really looking forward to sitting down with it when the Xbox Series X launches. At number seven is Watch Dogs Legion, the next in that series, which we have to say the second a lot better than the first, and the premise of a police state running London just sounds wonderful to me. It's such an interesting idea to sort of just be like, no, it's after tech fascism takes hold. We're there. Let's see what that game is. Personally, I'm really looking forward to it. It's coming to PC, PS4, Xbox One, and Stadia October 29th. At number six is Spider-Man Miles Morales, which is coming exclusively to the PS5. It is the follow-up, not necessarily a full game, but kind of a mini sequel to the Spider-Man PS4 game. 
which looks as though they're really trying to ramp up what is possible in the world of. We aren't 100% sure if it's a launch day title, but it is going to be released this year. And let's just be clear, I am 100% on board for more Spider-Man. It actually continues the story that started in the first DLC, The City That Never Sleeps, and it comes out sometime in quarter four on PS5. And number five is Marvel's Avengers, a new game intended to give you a new story in its own timeline about kind of a Watchmen situation where superheroes get outlawed and things like that happen. It's based on an event called A-Day where the Avengers sort of lose spectacularly and things go very wrong. It looks like a very interesting game. There's a lot of cool stuff about the fighting system and there's a lot of stuff on a planned content roadmap. It's hitting Windows, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and Stadia on September 4th. At number four is Animal Crossing New Horizons, which brought us a lot of new ideas, but most importantly, preserved the Animal Crossing gameplay that everybody wants and gives us a lot of cool social functions that allow us to visit each other's islands, give each other bells, have a grand old time in our little imaginary economies where we build our houses and kind of rule the world, but not really. I know that's a very strange way of describing it, but provide an argument against it, thank you. Animal Crossing New Horizons is out on Switch. Number three is Ghost of Tsushima, an action game that gives us so much more. If you want to play this game stealth, it's really fun to do, but it's also just gorgeous, fantastic in its combat, in a lot of weird ways, very beautiful and very calming, despite being a pretty violent game. It also has this amazing photo mode. I'm not really one that gets super sold on photo modes, but Ghost of Tsushima got me. It's out on PlayStation 4 now, I'd highly recommend it. Number two is Doom Eternal, which is a sequel to the reboot from 2016 that I think we all know is a fantastic FPS, but this really builds on it in the same way that Doom 2 built on the original Doom. It's just a lot bigger, and there's a shotgun with a grappling hook. There's a shotgun with a grappling hook. I don't know what else to say. Once you say that, I'm just like, all right, let's play that game. It's just a great FPS. Is it the same exact thing as original Doom? Absolutely not. And that's why it's good that they have re-released original Doom and Doom 2 on various platforms, but Doom Eternal friggin' rules. And finally, number one, we're getting up closer to the release of this game, and it's probably gonna be a very big game, but Cyberpunk 2077. This is a game that has been delayed a lot throughout its development cycle at this point. It's November now, which is fine. I'm willing to wait if they think that it's important. Cyberpunk 2077 is gonna be a huge game. It's The Witcher as an FPS in a different world. At least that's what we know about it. In all honesty, it's probably gonna be a lot more than that. And that will probably be a reductive description of it. But still, I'm looking forward to it. You're looking forward to it. We're all going to play it. Cyberpunk 2077 is hitting everything on November 19th. Few bonus games for you. First, Horizon Zero Dawn Complete Edition landing on PC. If you've never played the game, this is certainly the way to do it. It is gorgeous and amazing. Also, it has a good story and it's perhaps one of the best examples of that type of open world game. Moving on next is a total revamp of Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2. I mean, we're obviously talking the most gorgeous version of these games, but I'm so excited to actually play a competent Tony Hawk game again. Next is Kingdoms of Amalur Re-Reckoning, a remake of a game that was incredibly expensive to make, was very cool and got almost no attention when it came out. It's an action RPG. It's very cool that they're actually even going for this again. Then Maneater, the kind of Tony Hawk's Pro Shark simulator slash kind of Far Cry. I don't know what you would get, just kind of shark violence ridiculousness. Gears Tactics, which is a game that I would say is perhaps one of the more competent attempts at adapting the Gears franchise to another genre. There's a couple of other attempts at it, but Gears Tactics does it particularly good, giving us a sort of XCOM-y game. And finally, Serious Sam 4, the over-the-top action game, makes its return on September 27th, 
and we're all anticipating that with bated breath. That's all for today. If you haven't played any of these games, definitely try them out. If you have, leave us a comment letting us know what you think. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week, and the best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription. So click subscribe. Don't forget to enable all notifications. And as always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at Falcon and Hero, and we'll see you next time right here on Game Ranks.